Hello everyone and welcome to and welcome back to Book Time with Elvis with me Mark and today I have five fantastic non-fiction adventure stories or books for you uh, to celebrate uh, August of Adventures. Now again I've only gone for books that I've got here. Uh, next week I will do again uh, probably fiction and non-fiction with books that I have uh, on ebook or um, maybe I don't have a copy of it, but I will definitely recommend it. So I'm going for the ones that I've physically got copies for. So if you think things are missing, that's the reason. Uh, let's start off with our first pick. Very exciting one, this. Terrible condition, but uh, yeah, here we go. Brazilian Adventure by Peter Fleming. Now you probably know Peter Fleming, or at least you know his brother, Ian Fleming, of course, who wrote, who wrote the James Bond books. Uh, this is the story of Peter Fleming's expedition to the Amazon uh, to find out what happened to Colonel Percy Fawcett, who you may know from David Gann's book, um, The Lost City Z. Uh, I think it was also a film uh, where um, Colonel Fawcett and his son uh, go missing in the, in the uh, Amazon rainforest. And just disappeared without a trace. It's been one of those mysteries where people have been uh, trying to find out what happened. And uh, Peter Fleming goes off to try and find out what happens. So let me give you the uh, kind of info about it. Um, we can read uh, part of uh, this quotation here. Beyond the completion of a 3,000 mile journey, mostly under amusing conditions, through a little known part of the world, and the discovery of one new tributa tributary, to a, to a tributary to a tributary of the Amazon, nothing of importance was achieved. Nothing indeed. In 1932, Peter Fleming, a literary editor, traded his pen for a pistol and took off as part of the celebrated search for missing English explorer Colonel P. H. Fawcett. With meagre supplies, faulty maps, and packs of rival newspapermen on their trail, Fleming and his companions marched, canoed, and hacked through 3,000 miles of wilderness and alligator-ridden rivers in search of the fate of the lost explorer. One of the great adventure stories, Brazilian Adventure is a f as fresh a story today as it was when it was originally published in 1933, so go and read it. It's great. Peter Fleming is a really good writer. Uh, I like him a lot. He, he has some other fantastic adventures. I can recommend, uh, for example, in the back of this book, it talks about One's Company, which is about his uh, journey uh, and travels within China and Russia in the uh, 1920s, early 1930s, uh, late 1920s, early 1930s. Also a fantastic book. Great real-life adventure. Go and read it. That's an order. <laughs> okay, the next one uh, is... Unfortunately, I've got a sticker on it, and I'm not going to remove it because it's been on there for a very long time. Um, it is The Bolivian Diary by Ernesto Che Guevara um, and this is the third instalment I think of his diaries when they were published separately um, there's uh, yeah, I can't remember the other two there's African Diary uh, but anyway this one's probably uh, the maybe one of the most important because it is the last one it takes us up to the time when uh, Che Guevara also uh, if you like mysteriously disappear. So let's read the blurb on the back for you. So, uh, this book tells of the last doomed 11 months of the most courageous and dedicated revolutionary of the 20th century, first published in Cuba in 1968 in a free edition of 250,000 copies. It has since become a classic. In November 1966, Che Guevara, a hero of the Cuban Revolution, arrives in Bolivia to lead a guerrilla detachment fighting that country's military dictatorship. At the beginning of the diary, the war games of the guerrillas seem no more real than those of Boy Scouts at play. But then, real deaths begin in flooded rivers or in ambush. The guerrilla fighters win their first battles and outwit the vastly superior forces sent against them. But in the end, Che Guevara and his dwindling group are surrounded and crushed. In its terse and simple prose, the Bolivian diary gives a unique account of the guerrilla's lonely fight against armies, mountains, jungles, hunger, disease and death. And the reader's knowledge of Guevara's fate makes the book even more mo makes the book an even more moving record of the guerrilla's day-to-day -day suffering and bravery. How can you not want to read this? What a fantastic story of action and adventure! 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm just so excited. I love these kind of things. Absolutely love them. Ah, oh, dear. Okay, the next one. So, you see, I think often travel books and certain history books do kind of cross over into adventure. The next one is a biography of a historical person uh, which is full of adventure, so I'm recommending it to you. And it's a book by James Palmer, and it's called uh, The Bloody White Baron. And uh, this follows a minor um, uh, Estonian aristocrat and his adventures in the Russian Civil War. So, yeah, it's pretty grim, though. Uh, he's not a very nice person. So, uh, yeah, let's read the back of this one, then. Uh, oh, you see... This is the shocking epic and largely unknown story of one of the strangest and most violent men in 20th century Russian history. And that's saying something. That's really saying something. Baron Ungern Sternberg was a Baltic aristocrat, a violent, headstrong youth posted to the wilds of Siberia and Mongolia before the First World War. After the Bolshevik Revolution, the Baron, now in command of a lethally effective rabble of cavalrymen, conquered Mongolia. The last time in history a country was seized by an army mounted only on horses. Driven by a cocktail of esoteric beliefs, anti-Semitism and violent obsessions, he invented ever more cruel ways to slaughter and torture his enemies. James Palmer's book is a fascinating recreation of this barely believable man who foreshadowed the Nazis in his terrible combination of mysticism and genocide. How can you not want to read something as horrific as this? You know... And as I say, it's just full of adventure, real life adventure, as well as some really horrible things as well. But it's interesting. You should read it. Definitely. OK, the next two are actually by the same author because I love him. And although um, I don't have uh, my favorite uh, couple of books, physical copies of this author with me, um, nevertheless, I love everything he's he's written. The first one by Giles Milton, if you regularly watch this channel, you've probably heard me mention him a couple of times, is The Riddle in the Night, and this is the story of the medieval explorer Sir John uh, Mandeville, and uh, of course there are, I think you can get a Penguin classic uh, copy of The Travels of Sir John Mandeville, but in this uh, instance Charles Milton follows in his footsteps uh, in order to find out you know, how much of uh, those travels were nonsense or not. Uh, so, Let's crack on with the back here. In 1322, Sir John Mandeville left England on a 34-year pilgrimage. He returned and wrote a book claiming it was possible to circumnavigate the globe. He was right, of course. For centuries, none doubted Sir John. Many regarding him, uh, many regarding him, not Chaucer. Many regarding him, not Chaucer, the father of English literature. In the 19th century, skeptics questioned his voyage and suspected he never left England at all. The riddle, and the, night, a rid, the riddle and the Night investigates if Mandeville really made his voyage or whether his book, The Travels, was a work of imaginative fiction. Best-selling historian Charles Milton unearths clues about the journey and reveals The Travels is built upon a series of riddles which have, until now, remained unsolved. How fantastic is that? You know you want to read it. So why not? Go and read it. Charles Milton's great. Absolutely great. You will love his books. Trust me. He has such a great way of writing narrative history. Uh, this is maybe one of the weaker ones, actually. Uh, and it's still good. So, there you go. Next up, it's also, of course, by Giles Milton. And uh, it is Big Chief... Oh, sorry about the glare there. Big Chief Elizabeth. How England's adventurers gambled and won the new world. So, there we go. You know you want to read this one, of course. And, of course, that's exactly what it is. It's uh, foot action-packed of all the different adventures of all those buccaneering, bucca swashbuckling buccaneers of the Elizabethan age as they forged uh, their way across the uh, newly discovered uh, North America trying to keep out the Spanish and the French and all sorts of things. So it's a fantastic read. Let's read the back of it. Big Chief Elizabeth is the tale of heroism and mystery surrounding the first English settlement in the New World in the 16th century. The author of the best-selling Nathaniel's Nutmeg, also an excellent book, I recommend it, uh, illuminates his book with first-hand accounts to reveal a remarkable and long-forgotten story. So there you go. Not long-forgotten, 
anymore because you're going to read it and find out it's a great story and full of adventure and it's all true of course and that's that's why I love I mean I love fiction and non-fiction but non-fiction adventure is fantastic because it's real that's the amazing thing so I'll be back next week with some more recommendations to celebrate this month or the, this coming month uh, of adventure August of adventures thank you very much everybody do take care of yourselves and see you soon bye bye Oh, 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 oh,